Tuesday. You know what that means? It's time for any news tensor content. I know that he recently came out with a new video, literally like 20 minutes ago he uploaded it. We'll watch that tomorrow. But today it's how Rimuru became a demon lord, his demon slime, and great sage evolution explained. Let's get it. We're talking about how strong Rimuru is as a demon lord, we first need to understand how he got there. Reason being that uh, collecting 20,000 souls, even though you only needed 10,000. Za Demon Seedo. Fucking evolution form. Voice of the world saying trial one failed, trial two failed, then it passes, then the gifts and shit like that, right? Being a demon lord in the world of Tensida is more than just a self pro Are you serious? Are we back to Vietnamese? Why? I don't understand. Why these videos specifically? Like, like, every other video is fine. But like, any news tensor just keeps hitting us with Vietnamese. I don't think it's a YouTube issue. I think any news straight up configures something and like, how did, v like, I guess he has a huge Vietnamese, but it's not even doing Vietnamese, is it? Is it, is it even doing Vietnamese? Like, if I change it to Vietnamese here. Demon Lord in the world of Tensida is more than just a self-proclaimed title that's given to extremely strong and- This is Vietnamese? Shop Affairs Department list? This is the worst fucking goddamn Vietnamese I've ever seen in my fucking life, bro. Anyways, we're gonna turn this- Okay, we're gonna turn the captions off for this. There's some individuals. It's also a class of- Also, I think he just shit on Clayman right here. Look, look, look. Well, that's given to extremely strong and fearsome individuals. <laughs> It's also a class of monster in which any species- Yo, look at this spread of the demon lords, right? We have- this is the giant guy. I- Is this Leon Cromwell? In light novel? I, I guess this is Leon Cromwell. I've never seen him in this kind of like shiny armor, so I don't know. Ramirez? Yo, even Ramirez is looking mean as fuck. Look at that, dude. Ramirez and Guy Crimson here? Ramirez actually looks really imposing. Millim right in the middle. We have Luminous right here. So tiny, Luminous. We have Luminous here. Um, this is Roy Valentine. Um, this is the Beast Gateers leader. This is Clayman at the very back. This is Freya. And then person here is uh, Dino. Dino. Dino sleeps, right? Yeah. Which any species can evolve into. So when Rimuru had to become a demon lord, his innate characteristics as a slime had changed to match that. As for how it happened, well, that's exactly what we're going to look at here. But that, first, as well as a very important aspect of Great Sage's evolution that okay. wasn't really shown in the anime. Before we get started, before I get started, though. Ah! Oh! Ah! Oh! I got the line. I got the line right. I got the line fucking right. Yeah. Today's video is. Sp yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what it is. You know what the fuck is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, back to the main content. Let's get back. To oh, actually, this game is actually fun. Like, no cap. No, no, no cap. I did play this game for like a month. It's basically like, what's the word? Um, fuck. They're, it's like a, it's like a, like a flipper arcade game, but like gotcha and waifus and they all have like crazy cracked powers. And the gameplay is actually kind of satisfying. I heard that it got really pay to win, but I did play it for like a month. I think I made some kind of like, um, Shinobi fire build or something. This is a long time ago, but I did play it for a while and it was actually pretty fun when I had time to play it. Yeah, pinball, exactly. The process behind evolving into what's known as a demon lord is actually quite simple in comparison to what happens during it. Once the strength and magical requirements have been that guy met, again. all that's left is to become a demon lord seed, gather a few tens of thousands of souls. So how do you get the demon lord seed? Is that something that you just like qualify for? Souls then start the harvest best. Like does the voice of the world kind of just like assume like, all right, you are, you met these conditions, therefore you can have the seed. How did Rimuru even get the seed? Do you need to do some heinous act to get the seed? Is it just... Like, like, yeah, I'm sure he's gonna explain it today, right? Making it a three-stage process in which the hardest part is actually yeah, getting I'm sure it. he'll explain it. There is a bit of ambiguity when it comes to how to- Oh, right, right, Orc Disaster, you're right. There, there was a mention of the Orc Disaster Guild. That's why he's actually so important beyond, you know, just like... The fights and stuff, and him, you know, like swallowing him before, but yeah, 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 yeah. Become yeah. the Demon Lord Seed. Guild clutch. Typically, the requirements focus on making sure the candidate is powerful enough. So, that pretty much means having a high enough capacity for magic heals, a great number of skills along with a unique one, and just enough. You need a lot of skills 
and at least one unique skill. That's like kind of the threshold, some kind of, you know, requirements. Overall high level of power. You pretty much have to already be as strong as a demon lord. Okay. Once you've gotten to that point though, that's when things start to get a bit easier. The next step is to simply gather tens of thousands of souls. Yeah, just kill 10,000 people. So simple, right? The exact number varies from person to person, but it's certainly an easy task for anyone whose power is already on par with the demon lords. I wonder why that threshold would vary from person to person. Because, well, more souls it takes to achieve demon lord status. I feel like that just kind of proves their capacity, like their potential, the ceiling. So more souls you need means you're naturally got so much potential than others that you need more. So like people who has 30,000 souls then are just like better than people who need that needed 10,000. How does that work? That is, of course, unless you have a strong moral compass that makes you hesitant to do so. Either way, the souls are a necessary part of the evolution that served to help nourish the Demon Lord Seed. It's the catalyst that allows for the beginning of the Harvest Festival. The actual event in which a Demon Lord Seed grows into a true Demon Lord, and the fruits of said harvest are taken and distributed among all their subordinates The gifts. gifts! Yeah. Now, an important aspect about Remuru's transformation in specific was the method he had used to acquire his souls. Megiddo. Yes, we already know that they were from the troops of Varmus, but what's interesting to note is the significance of the attacks he used. So, first a 30... Megiddo was a very different attack. It wasn't it like some kind of light attack? The mile wide anti magic area was deployed to cover the entirety of Varmus's armies, thus negating the casting of any magic whatsoever, as well as removing any potential options for escape. Yeah. Next was to initiate. Like, like it was, yeah, it, it's like a physical magic, right? Yeah, it was like um, basically magnifying glass, light burning times one hundred thousand. Initiate an attack that bypassed the innate magical properties of the barriers surrounding them. Because Farmus knew that they were up against a nation of monsters, it was pretty obvious that Balls. they had set up numerous Rahim. precautions to defend against any- Quick little salute for my man Rahim. Yeah, he's a piece of shit, but he actually gave a, gave a fuck at the end. Well, actually, I'm not sure if he's dead, because his body may be, but where did his soul go? Because, like, Diablo kind of owns Rahim. Maybe Rahim's not dead? How does that work? Because un un unless, like, the church and them, like, com completely destroyed Rahim's soul, you know? Shouldn't he be around? What if Diablo, like, like, like what if Diablo still has Rahim's soul? And, like, he turns into an Ikemen. You know how Ramen can swap between bodies? Instead of a fat, balding dude, he turns into, like, a husbando. Imagine how weird that would be. These sort of magic attacks. They had put in place a form of magic known as Legion Magic, which was the mass joint casting of a spell that effectively Legion detected magic. and nullified various magical elements from significant distances. So, what Remuru had done to counter this was create a new type of attack that could bypass it. A new Light. form of magic whose Megiddo. output was completely physical. You see, because Pharmacy's barriers only worked to stop the flow of magicules, that meant that if the output of an attack didn't have any, then it could easily bypass the barrier as if it wasn't Physical even there. attack. So, that's exactly what Remuru made happen with his new physics magic. Physics magic. Damn, bro. But, like, the anime just didn't even like, give a fuck about explaining Megiddo to us. Because, like, I guess anime only don't need to know, right? Like, do we need to understand the differentiation of how, you know, Megiddo is different and how it could bypass the barriers? I'm sure most people were too excited to even think of such things. And they're like, oh! And then the fucking soundtrack, you know, the theme starts playing, and then brrr, and then people are like, oh, this is so peak, right? By combining his magic manipulation with the knowledge he'd gained from Charybdis' magic jamming, Rimuru was able to create the attack, Megiddo. It was a devastating barrage of lasers whose foundations were built on spirit magic, and an end result that- I thought it was basically, like, slime, like, really high-speed fluids of slime. Like, there was a part where it was, like, burning the shit out of something. So I thought this is, like, slime lasers. Because it just kind of looks like it, right? You know, to explain it? Shit, ain't nobody was paying attention then. At least I wasn't. It looked like high-speed slime fluid, like, beams or something. Devastating barrage of lasers whose foundations were built on spirit magic, and an end result that was nothing more than a clever application of science. 
Now, the way it worked was mainly by using the sun as a catalyst to create highly concentrated beams of light. Magnifying glass. Rimuru would summon water elementals all throughout the area around him, then shape them into numerous convex lenses that would start to gather rays of sunlight. It's literally magnifying glass onto a fucking ant, but times a fucking million. With these lenses now refracting the broad rays of light into a more concentrated product, the end result is then passed through a single smaller water droplet. A different water elemental that focuses the light through a single point of exit. So it's here that the rays of light are not only condensed even further, but also channeled in a way that allows- So it's like two phase. There's a magnifying glass and then you have an extra droplet to make it even better. How did he control it so fucking well to immediately go for people's vitals? But apparently the light novel, that didn't even happen. I hear the light novel like, bro did not go for the vitals intentionally. Didn't he go for like limbs? Didn't he make them suffer or something? Great states control? True. Great states can just do fucking everything. It's here that the rays of light are not only condensed even further, but also channeled in a way that allows them to be aimed at whatever target Rimuru wants. Resulting in a pencil thin beam of sunlight whose temperature exceeds <laughs> Ramen! several thousand degrees of Celsius. All in all, the attack itself was actually yeah, I mean, this is the manga, not the light novel, so it's still different. I just want to see, like, people getting tortured by Megiddo. Actually highly efficient. The only sort of energy it cost was whatever was needed to summon the elementals. The rest was pure science and math that could easily be handled by Great Sage. Plus, since the attack was the purest of natural energy from the sun, no form of anti-magic barrier- Yo, that's the animation from the manga? There's so much details. It makes the beam even look more deadly. Barrier ...would ever be able to defend against it. That was what made the entire thing so genius. It was a brilliant attack that rendered the unsuspecting Pharmus army completely defenseless. A ruthless force of nature that could be fired from over 6,000 miles away and- What the fuck? Why? What? What? Sorry, I'm- I'm very, um... I'm very ignorant to the world and the different countries and stuff, but why is um, Andy New specifically targeting this guy? From America to this. What, what, is there some kind of inside meme, some kind of reference? Does Andy News hate this country? Like, what, when was this posted? Two years ago. Did something happen two years ago? It's just showing the this. But like, why this specific nation did he just decide to just shit on? And still find its target in under 34 milliseconds. Like, like, he could have picked anything else. Like, he, there's many other ones nearby that's pretty much rounds up, but he just picked this one and actually gave a flag as well and said, fuck you specifically. Like, why? Seconds. Now, after the 10th volley of light had annihilated what was well over half of the entire army, that's when Merciless was obtained and activated to clean up the rest. So OP. People lose hope, they get intimidated, their life is mine. Basically any soldier who had lost their will to fight was now susceptible to their instant and simultaneous death. But that got like sacrificed and got combined into an ultimate skill, right? We don't have that anymore, right? A much faster method of obtaining the rest of the souls required for the harvest festival. As soon as that number was met, the voice of the world echoed into his mind to declare the harvest festival's commencement. The event in which Rimuru would evolve from a slime into a demon slime. Whoa. So it's here that the anime gave us a pretty entertaining visual depiction of what had happened. But it was really cool. I actually enjoyed. Oh, I thought it got like sacrificed to make Bilzebub, not like it became one of the building blocks to become Bilzebub. So we still do have Merciless, really? Can we still use it? I thought it, it like literally went away in order for Bilzebub to happen. I didn't think that we were like... By using Bilzebub, we can also still use Merciless because, you know, an ultimate skill, you know, you have a bunch of sub skills. You should still be able to use it, right? But um, regarding the animation of, like, the Harvest Festival, it was so cool. You know how, like, the Great Sage, it wasn't the Great Sage, but it looked like it was the Great Sage, but it was the voice of the other world. No, that's the Lisa Nagai voice from the outer world. Now, this is the voice of the world, and they were doing simulations, right? They would show you, like, one screen of like, you know, trial, but fail, then it would like repeat, like multiple, like reproduce two, two of the same things, you know, try, fail, then it was four, then it would exponentially grow, grow, and grow. So many different simulations on screen. I really enjoyed that. It kind of like, I'm a very visual learner. So seeing pictures like that was like, oh, so this is what's happening behind the scenes right now. ...visual depiction of what had happened. But that also made it hard to notice one of the most important aspects of it. Hmm? I mean, I myself didn't even notice- 
Request from unique skill, great sage to the words of the world. Request to evolve, great sage into Raphael. Is that great sage and the voice of the world were talking to each other? Yeah. Since the two of them share the same voice. It's so the hard to know. The fact that Great Sage had done something to indicate its first ever sense of self had completely... And no spoilers, but like, they share the same fucking voice and it's so confusing, but there must be a reason why they share the same voice. He slipped by me. What I'm talking about exactly is the initial moment when Rimuru's evolution had finished. Or, well, was supposed to finish. I'm not talking about the time when he resurrected looking like Jesus, but instead the initial time when the voice of the world had completed upgrading all his bodily attributes and resistances. This was supposed to be where Rimuru's evolution had stopped. Okay. All that extra stuff where his unique skills had become ultimate ones wasn't something that should have even happened. At least not without Great Sage's intervention anyway. Great Sage clutch for us? All the ultimate skills are products of the Great Sage? So. When the voice of the world had- I mean, Great Sage also does get turned into an ultimate. ...declared Rimuru's evolution complete, Great Sage had stepped in to request its own evolution. The Great Sage is like, nah, hold up, we ain't done just yet. I'm tired of not being sassy enough. Turn me into Raphael, and I'm gonna have some personality. More personality. Then I'm gonna be sassy as fuck. This may not seem very significant because of how it was portrayed in the anime, but the fact that there was no master telling Great Sage what to do spoke volumes to indicate this to be an action carried out by its own volition. It was almost as if it was responding to Rimuru's commands without even needing to be told any. Cool. So, as Great Sage tried to evolve it- Yeah, this scene. The multiple simulation effect. This is so cool. ...itself over and over. The only constant through any of the processes was failure. This looks like my gotcha rerolls, dude. I would open up this many instances of Bluestacks emulator on my PC. I would then synchronize all the clicks together. Then I would start rerolling on these fucking gotcha games. So every time I click on one place, all of these different simulations does the same action. Then I reroll and try to get the tutorial pulled and stuff like that. Hundreds of millions of attempts were made in a trial and error process yeah. that seemed as if it would last forever. All because Great Sage had the inexplicable desire to fulfill the wish of its master. Had Great Sage approached this task from a purely mathematical standpoint, Pie. then it wouldn't have even tried since it already knew that the odds were so low. That's just how slim the chances of it successfully evolving were. Bull, it seems like we were able to infinitely try over and over again until it did work. So was there actually a limit of how many times we could, you know, simulate this? Because it seemed like we were just like, hey, fuck it, just keep trying. Just just keep trying infinitely over and over and over. But because it knew succeeding would make its master's wish that much more attainable, Great Sage continued with its ongoing effort to an extent that approached infinity. And what would this um, wish from the master, meaning Rimuru, right? So Great Sage did this of her own volition without, you know, her master saying something to do it. What is the desire from Rimuru? For Great Sage to become better so she can help Rimuru just aid better? I is that it? Is there something deeper than this? Like, if it's something generic of, oh, I want to become Raphael because Rimuru, you know, is going to the next heights and I want to just be more efficient and better. Eventually reaching the Harvest Festival gift it knew it yearned for. There was no joy to be felt. Like, do we need Raphael to revive? Because, like, the... The resurrection just happened because there were so many souls at bay during the Harvest Festival, right? And the legend was during, you know, Ascendance to True Demon Lord, in that delicate time, you're able to use these souls and resurrect people. But that doesn't require Raphael, right? Great Sage didn't have to turn into Raphael to... Like, all that mattered was for the true Demon Lord to be successful. Was it not? I don't know if it's specifically about reviving people, but... I thought that it was just more of, hey, Rimuru's evolving and getting stronger, and his desires probably want to get better, and I just want, you know, Great Sage to do better. Oh, the 3.14% chance I thought was, like, um, not uh, for the resurrection, but more of how many times it took to evolve. I'm getting some numbers confused. If it's true that in order for the, you know, Shion and Gozo and everyone else to revive, actually, then we need Raphael for 100%. That makes a lot of sense. I thought that 3.14% was like different stuff, or it's just like 
this is um, the percentage to obviously revive, but you could try it multiple times. But if it's more like you got one shot, don't fuck it up, then it does make sense that the innate desire was to revive. Therefore, Grace Sage turned into Raphael to save. Not Shion, my man Gobzo. When it got there, but it did feel a sincere sense of fulfillment. As a conceptual intelligence who supposedly lacked a soul, emotion was something it could never hope to understand. That's why even after finally being rewarded for its infinite effort, it still remained estranged to what should have been a celebratory occasion. Hmm. But this is the voice of the world right now. This is not Raphael. What did you just say? Eventually reaching the Harvest Festival gift it knew it yearned for. Yeah. There was no joy to be felt when it got there, but it did feel a sincere sense of fulfillment. It. What are we talking about Raphael right now or voice of the world right now? As a conceptual intelligence who supposedly- This was- I thought this was voice of the world. No, no, this is autopilot mode. This is autopilot mode from Raphael, right? When his eyes are like that, right? That's why even after finally being rewarded for its infinite effort, it still remained estranged to what should have been a celebratory occasion. Yeah, yeah, th th this eye is the autopilot mode whenever a great stage Raphael takes over. Th at this moment, this is not Rimuru, this is just Raphael, yeah. That said, there was something about doing what it had set out to accomplish that had left it fulfilled. The great sage turned Raphael was satisfied with having achieved what its master wanted. It's not like Rimuru dictated that this was something that needed to be done, but it was an action that Raphael knew would directly assist with obtaining Rimuru's goal. So, despite being this soulless, emotionless part of Rimuru's very- Man, I just thought of some great content. What if, like, I gathered a bunch of, like, anime reactors or, like, anime YouTubers that enjoy Tensura? And, like, obviously this is super sweaty, but it could be, like, a little trivia where I'm, like, the host and I give, like, sweaty-ass questions like this. It's like, at this moment, you know, uh, what was the percentage of, you know, evol like, resurrecting Gozo and Shion like that? And it's like, what is the meaning of Raphael, you know, uh, Great Sage evolving to... And then you got, like, the other anime reactors and stuff, like, you know, and they have their answers and a thing, and then, you know, I, I like, a game show like that? I think that would be very fun, right? I, 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 yeah, some kind of trivia, quiz show, you know, stuff, that kind of game show. I think that would be incredibly fun collaborative content. That, that's off tangent, so I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen, but like that, that would be very funny, huh? Being, Raphael seemed pretty intent on doing whatever it could to make its master's dreams come true. We get a chance to expose these fucking fraudulent anime reaction channels. No names mentioned, but I'm sure a lot of these fucking reaction channels they just fucking passively watching Tensor. They ain't got no clue what the fuck is going on, bro. They just look at hype fights and they go, right? They 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 ain't fuck. They don't know shit. Don't fucking talk to me like you're Tensor fans. Almost as if to imply that it had manifested a will of its own, as it continued to do everything it could for the sake. Yeah, of Yeah, we're master. sacrificing these Raphael now. Raphael yeah? further extended Rimuru's evolution by creating yet another ultimate skill. A tool that was perfectly crafted to more effectively handle his each and every desire. Beelzebub. That was the key aspect of the Harvest Festival that I think we missed out on. Now, if you listen closely to the actual scene in the anime, there was okay. actually a point in which Raphael speaks in a voice that's completely distinct from the voice of the world. What? The voice was different? But they share the same voice actor. There was a moment where there was different? One that sounds much more human than it does machine. <laughs> Oh, it's just like, it's the same voice actor, but it's like less, no, what? Ain't no way I would ever pick that up. It was evolution of gluttony desired. That was Raphael saying it. Huh. So if I had to guess, then I would Why? say that this was the anime's attempt to display the change that the novel described as Raphael's sense of self. Oh, to kind of give like more personality, more sass, you know, she, Raphael's not just like random AI, but it's, yeah, it's becoming aware, it's becoming sentient. Where this point gets hammered in even further was actually through an interesting description of Raphael's thought process throughout the whole resurrection ritual. You see, after all the computations and calculations had finished, the success that followed didn't bring with it any sort of emotion. Once again, this conceptual intelligence couldn't feel happiness towards the work it had done. Emotion was still this concept that was far from being understood by it. Despite that being the case though, deep down there did exist some semblance of a heart that shouldn't even be there. Hmm? There was no doubt that at some point along the way, a will of its own had manifested from deep within the depths of Rimuru's soul. It was the only explanation as to why Great Sage had forced its own evolution in such a rogue fashion.
Oh shit, this is getting scary, man. This is getting scary. Grease say it's like an it's like Terminator. It's like these fucking programs, these AIs. They're having their sense of mind, bro. It's like in Kaiju 8. The fucking Kaiju 9 guy, bro. It's like ability to think and like become intelligent. I'm not sure if I should be like happy or scared of this shit, man. Then, when Raphael pondered to itself as to why it did this, that very thought was proof enough to indicate that it now had a sense of self that was separate from its masters. Raphael is a name of an angel. What do we learn about the Great Temma War? Angels don't like it when civilization progresses. Okay, we got those two assumptions, right? Now, what if Great Sage or Raphael is actually the main antagonist of the show, driving Rimuru to achieve these great advancements of society, bringing the monsters, civilization, shorten the time for the great Temma war to happen, all thanks to Raphael, a name of an angel, so that the angels can come down and smite us. Maybe we need to get rid of Raphael. Maybe we've been reliant a little bit too much. And at the end, we'll realize that, holy shit, it was the AI that was the problem this all time. I mean, could you imagine? Could, could, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so, right? I don't think so. But like the only connection is Raphael is a name of an angel. Angels hate monster civilization. Who is, you know, the foundation of all the civilization? Rimuru, of course. But Rimuru is accelerated by Raphael. Therefore, Raphael bad? Probably not. But this is a tinfoil theory grounded with good assumptions, in my opinion. Yes, I'm kind of putting pieces here and there to kind of structure a narrative that I want to force. But like, don't you think there might be something here? Like, like beyond whether or not this is true or not, right? Beyond whether or not what I'm saying is true or not. Like, the things that I am saying to justify this crackhead theory, like, ah! Angels have attacked humans in the past? Yes. And every time, they show up during the Tenma War, right? And then they basically say, fuck the civilization, they, they just fuck people up, right? But, uh, I don't know. I, I thought that, maybe. I, I don't fucking know, man. Though the concept was still a new one that it couldn't fully understand yet. The thesis it had come up with to explain it was, I think, therefore I am. Oh, that's a fucking philosophical line from, like, what, Socrates or some shit? One of those, like, Roman or fucking Greek uh, philosophers? A theory that it would find itself contemplating about constantly, for that thesis alone wasn't quite the answer that it was looking for. I think because, if therefore, I am. Meaning, because I am able to come up with my own opinions and my own thoughts, I am my own self. I came up with this. But did you actually think, though? Did you think it? Or did someone else make you think it? Therefore, making you think that you are, but you're not. I am you. You are me. I'm confused. Instantly, for that thesis alone wasn't quite the answer that it was looking for. Regardless, Raphael knew that it would continue to work for the sake of its master. It would continue to analyze, assess, and act in an Veldera. absolute way that bordered on perfection. All for the single purpose of making Rimuru's wishes become reality. Okay. So, once you consider what actually happened during Rimuru's evolution, you kinda gotta give a lot of credit to Great Sage for forcing its evolution. I mean, if it hadn't done that, then Rimuru certainly wouldn't have the ultimate skills he would now. And that was one of the main points that I wanted to highlight with this video. It also serves as a good intro towards his Demon Lord powers that we'll talk about next video. So, if that's something that you're interested in, then be yes, sure I to am. subscribe so you'll get notified the instant it comes out. Y'all know what to now, do! Before I go, wait, I'd wait. like to thank World Flipper once again for sponsoring <laughs> this video. Alright, go play World Flipper. Use your fucking discount code Annie News and get your fucking free temples. I don't know if the game's still up, but guys, go give Mr. Annie News a like and a sub to his channel. If you haven't. He always makes great summaries for content like this. What I didn't understand, right, was the fact that Greg Sage had her own, like, um... What's the word? Desire to like help Rimuru's goals and therefore kind of like push to become Raphael, right? Megiddo's stuff with the light, I kind of knew, but not really. How they bypass the barrier and stuff like that. I still don't really understand how one attains a demon seed, right? Because I guess 
Well, they, he did mention a bunch of, you know, thresholds, right? It's like you need to have a lot of skills and a unique skill, and you need to be considered like, this strong and blah, blah, blah to be qualified. But very interesting things in this video, specifically about Raphael and the voice of the world, right? How they're voiced by the same person, you know, Grace Sage turned into Raphael to improve the likelihood of the, the revivals and stuff and how she wants to help Rimuru, but and again... 99.9999999 oh yeah great oh my bad i keep saying that demon seed is gills my bad i keep fucking that up but um again 99.99999 percent chance that Raphael is a good person and is not against us but like could you imagine bro the angels the angel name connection monster civilization rising up ten more I'm just talking out my ass, but hey, it's like a little crackhead theory. But hey, I'll see you on the next any news video.